Have you been searching for the perfect homemade pizza dough recipe? It's so easy, whips up really quick, and you can make pizza whenever you want. Hey, you're watching Preppy Kitchen, where I, John Cannell, teach you how to make delicious homemade dishes to share with your family and friends. This homemade pizza dough will be ready before you know it, so let's get started. First off, we have to wake our little baby yeast up. They're all tucked away in this package, basically like freeze dried into little granules, and they need a nice warm environment to wake up in with a little bit of food. So we want to use water that is warm, not cold, not hot. Cold won't wake them up, hot will kill them. So go for about 100 degrees. If you put your finger in, it should feel warm, not scalding hot. And I also like to use my mixing bowl but first, I warm it up by filling it up with hot water. Just because the glass is so cold, it'll sap the heat out of that water in an instant. So pour that out. There's a sink there. <laughs> and now I'm adding in three quarters of a cup of warm water between 100 and 110 degrees. I'm gonna add in half of a tablespoon of sugar. The remaining half will be used later. That's the food. And now one package of active dry yeast. You could also use instant yeast for this as well. Pour that out there. It's usually still full of yeast. So just open that package up, wipe it out, and give it a quick stir. Just stir, stir, stir. 106 degrees, all stirred up. Cover this up, let it hang out for like five minutes, maybe seven. You're looking for little bubbles to form. That lets you know the yeast has woken up and that pizza dough is gonna be on its way. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay. Five or so minutes later, let's take a peek under the bonnet. Ooh, perfect, super frothy, bubbly. Those yeast are kicking. So here's the deal. This gets put aside for but a moment. Here I have two cups, 240 grams of all-purpose or double zero flour. And I'm gonna add three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. That pizza dough needs some flavor. You could also add in like half a teaspoon of dried rosemary. You could add in oregano, any herb you like, even um, onion powder, garlic powder. You do you. Okay, the rest of the sugar, the remaining half a tablespoon, just give it a whisk. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Okay, now everything's all set. I'm taking out the stand mixer, but you could totally do this by hand, a little well in the middle. It gets messy, but you could use a wooden spoon. I just like using the stand mixer since I have it and I can dust off this dough hook. Almost never use it, so it's in pristine condition. Okay, let's get that mixer out. Okay, attach that dough hook right on there. Okay, here's the deal. If you notice the dough is not coming together, and we'll talk about that in a moment, just add a little bit more flour and you may have to, depending on the humidity, X, Y, or Z, you're measuring. Okay, we're gonna go on low. Making a dough is always funny because at first you're like, oh my gosh, this is going totally wrong, what's happening? And then it's like, oh, it worked out, perfect. So just keep going, don't lose faith. This is optional, but I can't help myself. I'm just gonna tamp some of this down. Okay. Now let the mixer do its thing. It's gonna take a couple minutes, so just be patient. See, at first you thought, oh my gosh, that's way too much flour, but then, things incorporate, it all works out. Giving my dough a literal blessing of water just because it actually seemed a bit dry. You can add a bit more flour if it's wet. You could add a little bit more water if it seems dry after you mix it in. This is a cohesive ball, which is what you want. Let's see right here. It's a little sticky, it's not too bad. I'm gonna be adding a lot of flour onto my well-floured surface when I need this, so this is just about right. Take this away, clean surface, we'll sprinkle of flour, we're gonna to get to kneading. We don't need to knead this for very long because the mixer did a lot of the kneading for us, but always good practice. So, just a little flour, sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. And now, that ball of precious, delicious dough out. And we're just going to work it a little bit to help activate all that delicious protein in there, AKA the gluten. And you can see this is actually pretty close already. Um, you wanna be able to form it into a ball, done. And then I can press down and it bounces back. So it's bouncing back, it's nice and neat. Really it spent a lot of time in that mixer <laughs> that it, so it didn't need the kneading, but if you're doing this by hand, you definitely will need to knead the dough uh, for maybe four to five minutes until it looks like this, like a nice clean 
bouncy little ball. Now that our dough is kneaded, we can put it aside, get a big bowl out, and add in a few tablespoons of olive oil. You could use regular oil as well, like a vegetable oil, AKA soybean or canola oil. Okay, move it around. This is where our dough is gonna rise up. Plop the dough in here. Kind of, I like to grease the top a bit so it doesn't dry out. The boys are gonna be so excited. I was talking to my mom on the phone and reminiscing about the homemade pizzas we would do together when I was growing up and the boys heard pizza and they must have heard it at school because we haven't talked about pizza that much. And they've been asking like, have, are we having pizza for dinner? Is it pizza night? So tonight is actually gonna be pizza night. They're gonna be so excited. But first, I'm gonna cover our dough up and leave it in a warm, cozy place. I'm actually gonna put mine in the proofing drawer. But if you don't have a proofing drawer, just turn your oven on to 120, let it heat up, turn it off, and then plop your dough in. It'll be really nice and warm and uh, no drafts or anything. Okay, in you go. My dough had time to rise and I might have fiddled with it off camera and like poked it a bit. I couldn't help myself. But that's what it looks like now. It doubled in size. Looks good to me. What we're gonna do now is punch it down. Punch, 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 punch. And then we're going to roll it out onto a lightly floured surface. I'm not gonna do the crazy acrobatics. I am not that person, although I might aspire to be secretly. Shh. Let's liberally sprinkle your surface with flour. I'm gonna take out the pizza dough right now. Now we're going to place it over here. It's gonna flour the top as well. Roll that pizza dough out. And once you get it to a good size, you can gingerly lift it up and just stretch it out a bit. You can be kind of fancy and do the whole twirling thing, but that's not me. Okay, that's nice. Nice and thin in the middle with a thicker crust. Once your dough is rolled out, it's time to transfer it to the surface you're gonna work on. I used to have a pizza stone. I don't know where it went, but if you have one, go ahead and use that. I'm just gonna use a regular old cookie sheet today. And you could put cornmeal on the bottom. I do not like the mouth feel of that cornmeal though, so I'm not gonna do that. For the edge of the crust, you could fold it under, you could pinch it over. I think I'm gonna pinch mine over just a little bit. So we have that nice border. And now we can just give it one final kind of stretch out a bit. Gonna give my hands a wash and then we're on to the next step. I'm gonna brush the surface with just a little bit of oil, just lightly brushing it, especially the crust. If you're making a white pizza, you could infuse the olive oil with some garlic and season that and it would be good to go, but we're gonna do a red pizza. It's like the boys' first homemade pizza, so it has to be a classic cheese pizza for them. I'm also gonna dock the pie just a little bit pie. It'll stop it from bubbling up so much. I actually like the bubbles, but what if the boys don't? Spoon on some of your pizza sauce. This is kind of up to you, but I think it should be, you know, a thin coating. You're not having it pool up. The last step is to sprinkle some cheese and whatever toppings you like. Liberally sprinkle that cheese on top. If this were my pizza, I would have some mushrooms and peppers on it, but then no one else would eat it. <laughs> So I'm just adding some low moisture fresh mozzarella onto here that I shredded just off camera. This is gonna go into the oven at 425 until the cheese is melted and it's nice and golden, about 12 minutes or so. It totally depends on your setup. So keep an eye on it. All right, this pizza's for the boys, but let's get real. Most of it's for us. <laughs> Sorry, kids. Uh, including the first bite. If you like this recipe, check out my quick and easy savory playlist. Lots of delicious savory meals to delight your palate. But now, it's time for a bite. That's nice. <laughs> the boys are gonna be so excited, they love pizza. Oh, they call it pizza. Anyways, if you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.